So I've got to say, I'm both delighted and challenged to have been asked to come along and speak with you tonight. Delighted because our Clydesdale Bank's not just one of the biggest organisations in Guernsey, but in the whole of the UK. And challenged because since I've stopped playing football professionally on 18 months ago, um, I've been delivering courses to organisations and good people like yourselves. And the shortest course that I've delivered is four days long. So trying to condense it down into 30 minutes is actually a great personal challenge. Eastern, and there's McVeigh! It's 2-1 Norwich! How many people <laughs> wake up on a daily basis and think, every emotion I'm going to feel today is down to me? <laughs> that partner I have can't piss me off. <laughs> that driver in the other car can't make me feel angry. They can't. You'll do that. Now Mark, you've written a blog on Sport Lobster and you really draw the parallels between Formula One and football, but I suppose the first thing we need to do really is establish what your colours are for football. So I'm okay. a Manchester United, my honour. I'm with Ralph as well. Both United very fans, good yeah. Show. Say this had biggest impact on my life is an understatement. Whenever I was shown this by our sports psychologist when I was 25, 26, it literally changed my life. And, you know, it's very simple, it's very straightforward, but don't let its simplicity take away from the fact of just how powerful this is. They pressed them, they, 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 they pressed them high at the pitch. And yeah, again, he was almost in tears. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, but, but he is right. He, honestly, the, 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 I, thought, I thought this man's half Irish with Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he was, yeah, celebrating, Colin as Hattie now, he was yeah. celebrating as much as yeah, I was. Sure. <laughs> Irish, you know, it's an Irish name, so yeah, exactly. I have to support him. Michael here as well. Michael, Michael, Michael Salgado. <laughs> yeah, Michael O. Oh, Salgado. Oh, oh, Salgado. Yeah, just put the O at the beginning <laughs> instead of the end. <laughs> you got it. Three oh. Irishmen here, thoroughly enjoying it. You think they got it right? I think tactically they, they did get it right because they attacked them, you know, they set up well, but I just think they probably just give them too many chances. And, and that's, that's always the problem. When you have the class of Van Persie up front, you know, he's going to hurt you. And the two finishes today were sublime. Being a professional footballer, you must have fast feet, you must be nippy, you must be sharp. You might be terrified. I'm telling you now, someone like Jason Edward would be terrified to mount you because he'd never bloody catch you. You'd run between his legs and get lump for lump <laughs> Whatever your motivating factor is, you would have an enormous advantage yeah. over someone like him. Please welcome Paul McVeigh. Here it is. Here it is. The stupid footballer is dead. Yes. Where is he? Where have you left him? Well, who, you, who was it? You think there are a few about, do you? I, well, if you've met, if the title of the book says the stupid footballer is dead, that means you must think there are a few of them out there, or there have been. Well, the premise of the book is actually all about to succeed in football now, you cannot be stupid. And I don't mean academically stupid, I mean in terms of your approach to the game, your flexibility, how well you adapt to the new tools and techniques coming into football. So really that's where the stupid footballer cannot succeed as football evolves. Can you imagine if, say, on Monday morning, about 100 people in your company turned up for work because they knew they were freely choosing to be in there, not because they thought that someone was actually forcing them to come in? So for me, I do this exercise really just to become clear about what I won't accept in my life. You know, I, I'm pretty clear, I'm pretty adamant that I don't want that. And I've done this list many times. With just four weeks left of the season, the sackings and backings and the ups and the downs are all still up for discussion. Who'd be a manager? We'll find out more here on Late Kickoff. Who in this room has goals or targets for the workplace? Can you put your hand up? Just give a quick count. Who has goals or targets for the workplace? Okay, most people, that's what I expected. Now, who else would have well-constructed, well-thought-out, written-down goals for their personal life or outside of the workplace? Two, three. Now, I think that's amazing because if you were to ask people, what do you value more, your work life or your home life? Most people would say it's their home life. And yet, statistically, only 3% of adults actually set goals for themselves outside of the workplace. Hello, hi, Park, how are you feeling? Oh my word, what a weekend for GB! Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please give a massive welcome to our latest Olympic gold medal winner from the Women's Cycling Team Pursuit, Danny King! So just holding up this 
gold medal. Just show this crowd what that gold medal is like. So tell me, guys, what is it like to finally win the gold medal? Amazing. Oh, I can't even describe how it feels. Well, Will Grigg might be on fire, but this game <laughs> definitely isn't on fire. It, it's just, it, it's, it's as poor as Graham says, there's, there's not really anyone who's grabbing it by the scruff of the neck and saying, this is for a chance of the quarterfinal. Cristiano Ronaldo and I both come on at half time, happy enough, I was on the right hand side, he was on the left hand side. I like to think I got the better of him. So, uh, <laughs> and to be honest, I think sort of both our careers have taken a similar path since, since we both left um, Old Trafford that day. Blocked away. Now McVeigh for Norwich City and McVeigh has scored. Squeezed in by Paul McVeigh. I thought Paul was brilliant today. I really enjoyed his enthusiasm and the way he managed to link the sport into the business sector was brilliant. I have to say I was intrigued to see how he made the transition from a professional footballer to an inspirational speaker, but I found him witty, personable and intelligent. And I think probably about 95% of the people in the room, the comments he made resonated in the personal and business life.